Baby bunnies are ridiculously cute. I mean, look at these guys. But then they grow up, like this. And caring for them can be a tall order. In this video, I am going to share seven aspects that you may want to consider before getting a pet rabbit. So stick around. Roll the intro. What's up, everybody? I'm Diane from Hooks Hollands, bringing you rabbit info and bunnertainment since 2015. If you've never heard of the word bunnertainment, it's because I was trendy two videos ago and made it up. Just kidding, there's nothing trendy about me, but I did make it up and it means bunny themed entertainment, and I'm trying to get it added to Wikipedia. Before we get into the juicy parts of this video, I want to remind you that my website has a ton of rabbit information that can help you research whether a rabbit is right for you. And since you're watching this video, I'm guessing that might interest you. So if you go to ohiohollandlops.com and you can click on the bunny info tab, you will find quite a few pages that have rabbit information. For example, there is bunny basics 101, which will ask the tough questions to help you decide if a bunny is right for you. And it just helps you to get to know the type of schedule you would have to keep with your bunny and some facts that you might not know about rabbits. And then I also have the bunny care page and that is just jam packed full of all the different types of supplies and equipment and ideas for housing your rabbit, things that I use and things that I know work well with bunnies. And it just is an all-in-one resource if you are gathering items for your bunny. I also have a new video series called Rabbit Room Tour, where I share viewer submitted rabbit setups to help give you ideas for your own bunny's enclosure. You can go ahead and check out the Rabbit Room Tour playlist on YouTube here. And now for our featured presentation, let's help you decide if a bunny is right for you. Who will be caring for the bunny? If you are buying the bunny for a child, first of all, please don't buy for a child as a responsibility teacher. That is not a good idea. Bunnies can live eight to 10 years. That's a lot of responsibility for a long time. And children do lose interest in having a daily responsibility. It happens a lot. So if you are willing to step in, if and when your child loses interest in the responsibility, then it might work, but it's, possibly eight to 10 years, and that's daily feeding and cleaning, litter box changing, sweeping up. You have to make sure the bunny gets exercise and interaction. So it is a big responsibility. So whoever is going to be caring for the bunny, please make sure that they are willing to be committed for possibly 10 years. Make a thoughtful decision. If you are thinking of getting a bunny on a whim, such as for a Christmas gift or a birthday gift or an Easter gift, you okay there, Hazel? <laughs> Please don't. Make sure that you do your research, know that bunnies live eight to 10 years and that they are a big responsibility. Getting a rabbit needs to be a whole family decision that you carefully take all aspects into consideration. Who will be taking care of the bunny? What plans will you make for the bunny when you go on vacation? Do you have a rabbit savvy veterinarian in your area that can care for your bunny either during illness or for spaying and neutering? For me, I have to drive about an hour in any direction around here to get a veterinarian that will take bunnies and is experienced with bunnies in that I would trust them with caring for my rabbits. Is there anyone in your house that has allergies either to pets or to hay? It might be worth taking a trip to a local shelter, not only to look for a bunny, but just to be around them and see if the fur, their dander, activates your allergies. And the same thing goes with the hay. You also need to think about what other pets do you have in your home that might scare your bunny? Do you need to move that pet, such as a dog or a cat's designated area away from the bunny's area? So there are lots of aspects to consider within your family environment. So please don't buy a bunny 
for a gift for a child on a whim. Do your research and make sure it is the right decision that you're willing to make for the next eight to 10 years possibly. Have you considered the cost of having a bunny? Now, of course, you will have your startup supplies, such as the enclosure, a pet carrier, maybe an exercise pen for outside. You're very furry, Moose. <laughs> but then you also have ongoing expenses, such as the food, the hay, the treats, the litter, the toys. The list goes on. So there are definitely a lot of ongoing monthly expenses, but then you also have to consider how much is it going to cost to spay and neuter my bunny? Now, it depends on where you live and your veterinarian, but typically it's around three to $500, including you know, the office vet visit and maybe the aftercare, and they'll probably give you some pain meds for your rabbit. So that's a big expense. And then you also have to take into consideration there could be an emergency vet visit or two that you need to be prepared for financially. And more importantly, can you even find a rabbit veterinarian in your area? Many vets won't even see rabbits. Even though they are a very common pet, they are considered an exotic pet, and you do have to find a specialty vet that will care for a bunny. So if you are looking for a cheap pet, a rabbit is definitely not ideal for that. You might wanna consider a hamster or a fish or something like that. It is important to have realistic expectations. Bunnies are not like cats or dogs. For the most part, they don't let you pick them up, cuddle them, carry them around whenever you want. Sometimes, like Timmy here, they will tolerate it, but that is more the exception than the rule. You have to remember that rabbits are prey animals and they really have an innate instinct to prefer to be on the ground and under their own control. And I think when people see bunnies like Timmy here that are very calm and just very laid back, they get a misconception about what they will likely get when they get a pet rabbit. Now you can tell with Timmy holding his ear up here that he is on high alert. Now he's tolerating me holding him, but that's also because he really can't see how high up he is off of the ground because their eyes are on the sides of their heads and if you pick up a bunny and you carry it and hold it and cover its eyes or you hold like a football and tuck its little head under your armpit, that can definitely help. But I really don't recommend rabbits as pets for young children. Definitely not toddlers, not even elementary age for the most part. Again, there are exceptions, but that's usually what I recommend is middle school age, high school age and above because a lot of times young children will get scared when they pick up a bunny or they try to hold a bunny and the bunny freaks out and they scramble and they scratch the child or heaven forbid they bite the child just because they're scared. People need to understand these are prey animals and that, that they just need to learn to love the type of bunny that they get. Or if you're looking for an animal that you can carry around and just kind of maul and do whatever you want to, a kitten or a puppy might be a better choice. Spaying and neutering can help to improve the mellowness of your rabbit, but for the most part, they really just like coming up to you when they want to. And sometimes they will sit in your lap under their own choice, but again, that's not something that you should expect. So this is a three month old doe. This is a female. And I did name her Princess Peach for those of you who are wondering. And she just naturally is a little bit more hesitant. And this tendency will probably only increase as she nears maturity here within the next month or two. Now she is a very nice rabbit. She will let you pet her. She will come and get treats from you, but she really just doesn't like being picked up. She sees that she's up off of the ground and she really will start to freak out. Come here, Peachy. Come on. Now, see, I'm holding her bottom and I'm gonna bring her close to me. So although she is tolerating this, she is definitely not one that I could carry around easily and that she would feel fairly comfortable. She's just not as mellow and laid back as Timmy. Now the dog just barked outside and she really kind of tensed up and kind of shrunk down into my arms. And they have grown up listening to the dogs. So she's definitely one that is just she has a stronger innate prey instinct. 
What people need to remember is that even though you may be getting a baby bunny and it's extroverted and happy and seems to have very little that phases it, that can change as the bunny matures. And you might end up with a bunny with a very strong prey instinct and is scared by other pets in the house, noises, smells, sounds, and just really wants to interact with you on his or her own level on the floor, which is where bunnies usually like to interact with you with. Some of them will tolerate being held, being put in your lap, but it's really a good idea to have expectations that you're going to let your bunny come to you. Sit in a small area, ignore your bunny, let your bunny come up to you and learn that you are not a threat and just let them interact with you on their terms. So if you have realistic expectations that a bunny's personality and the amount it will want to interact with you and the way that it will want to interact with you, you have a much better likelihood of enjoying your pet bunny. Okay, I'm just gonna let her sniff me. I'm not even going to try to pet her right when I first get a bunny. I would not try to pet it. Let it come to you. Let it learn you're not a threat. Let it see you. Let's see, she wants me to just let her sniff me. Let your bunny see you coming in for a head rub. See, she's just not entirely sure about it. I'm letting her just investigate me at her own speed. So be patient and be open to different personalities of rabbits. You might not get the personality that you started with or that you desired, but with patience and plenty of interaction, most people can really learn to appreciate and enjoy the type of rabbit personality that they are matched with. A couple other things to consider regarding realistic expectations are, first of all, that bunnies like to chew. So you will have to basically baby-proof whatever area that your rabbit is in. That includes cords, any furniture that you want to protect, baseboards, and giving them plenty of toys that they can chew. They love cardboard, they love to chew on hay. Find things that they can chew and that definitely helps to dissuade them from chewing the things you don't want them to chew. Also, although bunnies can be litter trained and spaying and neutering definitely helps to make this more thorough, you still need to expect, <laughs> so cute, that there will be poo balls. Now, rabbit poop, there's a couple types of poop and we'll get into that, but most rabbit poop is really dry and hard and it's not actually as gross as you might think it is. So don't freak out, but you need to expect that you will find poo balls and hay. They're really messy with the hay too. So you will be sweeping, you will be vacuuming, and if you really are a neat freak with your house, then you might want to consider a different pet. Right? Hey. Now, I know my viewpoint is going to be a bit controversial, but I do believe that if given enough interaction and attention, a bunny can bond with their owner very closely and be very happy as a single bunny. However, if given the choice, I do think that they prefer living with another bunny. But this just doesn't always work for every bunny and every owner's situation. So there are definitely things to take into consideration before you make your decision. Some people get excited and they try to get two bunnies at once. And while that can work out sometimes, I really don't advise it and here's why. First of all, if you get two brothers, they eventually will likely fight and it can be very vicious and violent, bitten ears, pulled fur, scars, wounds, because around four or five months of age, bunnies often turn into grumpy hormonal teenagers. And even if they're not grumpy, they often display negative hormonal behaviors such as digging, the males might spray, they all might decide to start pooping everywhere to claim their territory, Bunnies that were previously almost litter trained can start to regress. You can often see mounting behaviors. Even if you have two girls or two boys, that's a display of dominance and they're establishing the hierarchy. But sometimes it can get out of control and the bunny's safety can be at risk. 
So two males are most likely to fight during the grumpy hormonal teenage stage around four to five months and before you can get them fixed around five or six months. A brother and a sister for obvious reasons is a bad idea. Two baby sisters probably have the greatest likelihood of continuing to get along and making it through the awkward teenage phase still living in the same enclosure. However, the problem is that baby bunnies can be difficult to determine their genders, especially if you're buying a bunny at eight weeks of age, things are still really tiny down there. And even an experienced breeder sometimes makes mistakes. And if you're buying from a pet store, I think the risk of getting the gender incorrect is probably higher. So no matter if you have two baby boys, a boy and a girl, or two girls, you have to wade through the awkward teenage phase before you can get your bunny spayed or neutered, yet they're already displaying hormonal behaviors and may decide that they just can't live with the other bunny anymore. So as I mentioned, this stage usually begins around four or five months of age, but bunnies usually cannot be spayed or neutered until around five or six months of age, sometimes a little bit later, depending on your veterinarian's preferences and the weight of your bunny and other health issues that might be under consideration. And even once you get your bunny spayed or neutered, it can take weeks for them to heal and then even longer for the hormones to kind of stabilize. So it might be seven or eight months of age before you can try to rebond them. And the bonding process, it can take days or it can take weeks or months or possibly just never be able to achieve success in bonding them. And then you will have to keep them separately, possibly forever. So they might be okay with that. You know, they know they have other bunnies in the area, which is how my bunnies live. You know, they're not spayed or neutered, but they have bunnies near them and that they can interact very close to. And I do think that they enjoy that, but it's obviously very inconvenient for the owner to have to have two separate areas for their bunny. So getting to it once definitely in most cases complicates the situation unnecessarily in my opinion. I usually advise that people start with just one bunny and get that bunny spayed or neutered around five or six months of age, let them heal, let the hormones balance and stabilize, and then around seven or eight months, think about getting a new bunny. Now, a great place to start and look for that new bunny is your local animal shelter. They often have bunnies that are either already spayed or neutered or old enough that you could get it spayed or neutered almost immediately. Camilla's right behind me, isn't she? <laughs> So there are definite advantages of getting an older bunny so you don't have to wade through the awkward teenage phase that you would with getting a baby, but it would be okay to get a baby no matter the gender. So yours is already spayed or neutered. Hi, Cammie. <laughs> and by getting a baby, you could try the bonding process almost immediately. You know, let your baby get accustomed to his or her environment, make sure they're eating and drinking and eager for attention and interaction, and then attempt the bonding right away. Now, you may have to separate that baby from your spayed or neutered bunny around five or six months of age, four months maybe, depending on the behaviors. You know, that bunny could start mounting, could be a little aggressive, a lot less likely to happen with the other bunny already spayed or neutered, but it's a possibility you would have to separate temporarily. So obviously the best option would be to have a spayed or neutered bunny and then go to a shelter and get one that's already spayed or neutered or one that you could get fixed right away. So in addition to avoiding pregnancy and likely avoiding a lengthy separation of the two bunnies, another advantage of getting two bunnies at different times separately is that you can make sure that a bunny is the right pet for you. And I'm sorry if you hear the guinea hens behind me. <laughs> They're so noisy. <laughs> if you feel that you only have the capacity, time, and attention-wise to give to one bunny and be an effective pet caretaker, then maybe one bunny is really the best situation for you. And there are certain circumstances with bunnies who might have very strong negative personalities that just aren't conducive to adding another bunny. So there are some situations where maybe one bunny is best. <laughs> they are so loud. So in a nutshell, if you can, 
two bunnies is probably the best option, but I really don't advise getting them at the same time. Unless you were to get two spayed or neutered bunnies at the same time, then that might be okay. But getting two bunnies that are not spayed and neutered at the same time definitely adds to possible complications and the length that they will need to be separated. She's so cute. This is Cammie. She is my pudgy bunny. Here are some tips for buying a bunny. Hi, you're really cute. Would you like to be my little guinea pig? Oh, it's okay. First of all, check your local shelters because they often have a lot of nice bunnies and because they're in a shelter, it doesn't automatically mean there's some sort of problem bunny. Oftentimes bunnies are relinquished because people just get tired of caring for them. They are a lot of work. So check your local shelters. No matter where you get your bunny, I definitely advise giving it a little mini physical before you take it home. Check the eyes and the nose and make sure that you don't see a bunch of discharge. Now, a little bit of wetness around one eye isn't typically a big deal, but if you see just caked on goop, that is possibly an indicator that your bunny is sick with something like snuffles, pastorella, or some other illness. You also want to check in the ears and make sure that you don't see signs of illness or something like ear mites. Now ear mites are something that are actually easy to take care of. So that's definitely not a deal breaker. You definitely wanna make sure your new bunny is healthy. And you also want to check the teeth and they don't like this. You're going to have to kind of turn them up on their rear end here and just look at their teeth. <laughs> this little guy is fighting me, hey. And you want to make sure that the top teeth are going over top of the bottom teeth. Because if it's the other way around or if they are right on top of each other, that is called malocclusion. And that can lead to a lot of problems that you will have to constantly take care of. So make sure the top teeth go over the bottom teeth and you're good to go. Now that isn't a guarantee that malocclusion won't happen down the road, but you are starting with a clean slate. And another thing that you want to check is the vent area. Well, not only can you check the gender through the vent area, but you just want to make sure um, that it is not crusty or really red and inflamed. That could be an indicator of vent disease. Now on a baby, it's not uncommon to see some poo balls down there. What you don't want to see is smeared on runny dried poop. That could be an indicator of diarrhea. And that's more common in babies that maybe were weaned a little bit too early. I don't wean my babies until seven, eight weeks of age because before then it just really is putting them at risk for um, stress-induced illnesses because their digestive systems are still very immature and unbalanced at this age. <laughs> you guys are so cute. And finally, please, please do your research on rabbit care and types of enclosures that you can have for a bunny. I will put the link below to my bunny care page on my website. I have just a slew of information and links on supplies to use, the type of food and hay I recommend, um, options for housing. It's just a really great, almost an all-in-one source to give you a good general understanding of the different supplies and setups that you can have for your rabbit. Rabbit food, I do have a video on that, but basically you need to know that rabbits need tons of hay. Hay has fiber, it helps to push things through their gut and keep things moving in the poop department. Timothy hay is good, orchard grass, oat grass, that's all good. You don't want to feed straight alfalfa because that is very rich for them. Um, they're eating my sweatshirt. <laughs> hay also helps to keep the rabbit's teeth trimmed. So like our fingernails keep growing, rabbit's teeth keep growing. So they need things to chew on to help keep their teeth trimmed. When you do select a rabbit pellet, try to find a quality pellet. I do recommend finding one that contains no soy. Soy can be very problematic for bunnies. It is tough for them to digest and it often ferments poorly and it can lead to stinky urine because they pass this excess protein into their urine that they can't digest and it makes their urine stinkier. And I can verify that when I tried 
switching off of Sherwood years ago to a commercial brand of rabbit feed because it was a lot cheaper but it did have soy and their urine did stink more and it's not as good for the bunnies so I do recommend Sherwood rabbit pellets they have a few different varieties and I have information on that on my website or you can go to their website as well the only other brand that I would recommend is Oxbow Garden Selects does not have soy in it now a common question I get is about treats for rabbits. Now for this age, for babies, I would not give them anything but hay and their baby pellets. I give them maybe a couple pinches of oats throughout the day. They really like it and they can handle that. And they tend to get a little nibble or two of the greens that I feed their mom, the parsley, the cilantro, the romaine lettuce. But any more than that, and they can have a really tough time digesting it. And you might think, well, how do I know if they're having a tough time? If you see mushy poop, now bunnies have different types of poop, and I'll get to that in a minute, but if there's excess mushy poop, that is an indicator that your bunny is having trouble digesting either the type of fruit or veggie that you are giving it or the amount. So definitely back off and maybe try them one by one and see what the results are. Hi. <laughs> so my advice is, what I tell my customers who get bunnies from me is, so they're picking them up at eight weeks. I tell them you can give the bunny like a thumb size piece of a leafy green because they're used to that. They've had nibbles. And maybe every other day, see how they react. Do they have mushy poop? It's probably not a good idea to do that for the first few days when the bunny is stressed, leaving its home through a new environment anyhow. But try, you know, thumb size. and. Over the next few months until the bunny is right around six months of age, you know, very slowly work the amount of greens up. Now you don't have to feed fruits and vegetables to your bunny, you really don't. These are not wild rabbits. Their digestive systems are different and some bunnies can tolerate the fruits and the greens just fine. And then I have some of my bunnies, they just get the mushy poop. They just can't handle it and can't handle much at all. So. You'll have to take the cues from your bunny's poop, how much and what types of treats that you give. But definitely, I would suggest no fruits at all until around six months. And after six months, you know, start with very small amounts, like a quarter size piece of a banana or a carrot. And the idea of giving bunnies whole carrots, that's really a bad idea. And Bugs Bunny just creates a poor stereotype um, for what you can give a rabbit. So. What I use with my bunnies, like I said, romaine, parsley, cilantro, kale. You can even get dandelions, the leaves and the flowers from your yard. Now, you don't want to have any greens that have been sprayed with pesticides. And obviously, if you have dandelions in your yard, you're probably not spraying and you probably won't even have dandelions. But dandelions are good. Plantain, now not the banana looking fruit, the plantain herb. And I have a video about identifying plantain herb in your yard, but that one's actually fairly well tolerated in younger bunnies and bunnies with digestive issues. And I even pick it and I dry it and I feed it to the bunnies throughout the winter. And if they're having some sort of digestion problem, that and I will feed them the dried plantain. So plantain's a great one. And if you don't spray your yard with pesticides. You probably have a ton of it and don't even know it. I also recommend staying away from the cruciferous vegetables like broccoli and cauliflower and cabbage. They can cause gas in your bunny and bunnies, they really just can't pass that gas very easily and it can cause digestive issues. So I would stay away from that. The enclosure. Now rabbits are kind of a tough animal because they're kind of occupying two different niches. You've got your farm rabbits. You know, there are still rabbits raised for meat and people who eat rabbits. And then you have pet rabbits. So there is a wide variety of opinion available on where you should keep your rabbit and how you should keep your rabbit. Now, most of you are here because you are seeking or have a pet rabbit. So I do recommend that you keep your rabbit inside with your family for one reason that you can control the climate. Rabbits can do okay in the cold if they have shelter, but heat is a different story. They can overheat very quickly and it can be deadly. The sunshine, 
the heat, the humidity, it's rough on rabbits. So by keeping them inside, you can control their climate. In addition, because your rabbit is around your family, it is more likely you will spend more time with your rabbit and that you will enjoy your rabbit and that your rabbit will form a bond with your family. So now that you've decided to keep your rabbit inside, what do you keep your bunny in? Solid floor is the best option if you're going to go with a large cage and the bigger, the better. Now, what a lot of people do is they either have a large cage and they have a room where they can let the bunny out when they are home to supervise the bunny, or they might have an exercise pen attached to the cage, or you can just use an exercise pen as the enclosure, and that's probably the cheapest option. Dog kennels are great to use as an enclosure, but ideally you find a room in your house such as a bedroom or a laundry room or even a basement that your family is in a lot, but it's not so big that you can't supervise your rabbit easily. In addition to my website, I also have a series of videos called Rabbit Room Tour, where I feature viewers' rabbit habitats to give you ideas for how you might want to keep and enclose your own bunny. Litter training. Yes, rabbits can be litter trained, but again, don't expect absolute complete litter training. Most or all of the urine should be in the litter box, but you're going to find little poo balls here and there. And if you have your rabbit spayed or neutered, that almost always assists with having a more thorough litter training. I do have a litter training video. I also have a blog post that I will link down below so you can check that out. I recommend starting with a couple litter boxes and there are different types you can use. You can use the ones, I use the ones with the grates in them to keep the bunny up off of their poop and pee. And a lot of people like the large deep cat litter boxes and then you put the litter in there. But if you put the bunny's hay either in a hay rack right above the litter box or in the litter box, like that's what these babies are in here just munching on their hay right now and they're pooping at the same time and peeing. So that definitely helps with the litter training. So there are different types of boxes you can use, but you probably wanna start off with a couple boxes and you're going to have to move it around. Find out where your rabbit is having accidents and put a box there. If your rabbit seems to want his or her litter box in a spot where it just isn't convenient and you really want it somewhere else, what you can do is put a litter box where they're going and then every day slowly move it towards the location where you want it. I have had this method be successful a lot of the time. When you are letting your bunny out to play, keep the area small, bring their litter box that they've used or have a litter box out there they can use. Whenever they have an accident, soak it up with like a paper towel or a tissue and put it in their litter box. Pick up any poop, put it in their litter box so that they smell, hey, this is where I'm supposed to go and you just need to keep working at that. And most bunnies are pretty quick to learn the basics. There will be some accidents, and like I said, spaying and neutering definitely helps with this. One mistake I see people make a lot is they take whatever bedding, whatever litter they're using for the litter box, and they spread it throughout the bunny's enclosure, like as a bedding. That is not gonna teach your bunny to pee and poop in the litter box. It's gonna teach them, hey, you can go anywhere you want. So. Whatever litter you choose, and there are lots of different options I have on my website. You can use um, shredded cardboard style litter, compressed wood pellets. I would recommend that if your bunny doesn't have a grate to keep them off, up off of the pellets, that you might wanna use the Aspen pellets or maybe the newspaper or the cardboard because pine sometimes can be an irritant to bunnies. I have not had an issue in the litter boxes I use with the grates and the pine pellets, but if they're in a litter box like this where they're on direct contact with the litter, then you might wanna make sure that it's a paper-based or maybe aspen. Hi. <laughs> Some people often use newspapers. You can just put hay on top of that, but you will want to change that every day to keep the smell manageable. And to be completely honest, and that's another question I get is about smell. If you clean your rabbit's area every day, and you feed them a high quality pellet that doesn't have soy, like the Sherwood pellets, there is very, very minimal smell. That's usually the comment I get when people walk in my bunny barn. And you know, I've got seven rabbits in here, plus these babies, and I clean it every day, little to no smell. 
And with only one rabbit in your house or two rabbits, it's very, very comfortable, I guess. Not very noticeable. So as long as you are giving your bunny proper care daily, that's not usually an issue. Now, sometimes their poop can smell. They have a couple types of poop. The one kind is kind of wet and it can be a little bit smelly, but that's not usually a big problem. Your bunny will need its nails trimmed and I do have a video about that. It is helpful to have two people, one person to hold the bunny and the other person to trim the little nails. You can just use cheap cat nail trimmers, that's fine. Just make sure you find the part of their nail that is pink, that has the quick. You might need a flashlight. You don't want to cut that part or else it'll bleed. So you just want to cut the tip and you'll be able to see that with the flashlight. Or just to be safe, you can simply cut the sharp tip off. Now you will have to trim nails more often. And that varies by bunny and the surfaces that they're on, how often you have to trim, but usually every one to two months. And you'll know when they start scratching you, you'll know their nails need trimmed. Molting and brushing. I do have a video on rabbit molting. Rabbits typically molt twice a year. Now babies will molt three times a year, but usually the summer molt is the bad one. And so you'll want to have a brush and I have recommendations on my website to brush your bunny at that time because if you don't brush the fur off of them, they will clean it when they're taking their little baths and they will ingest it and it could cause a blockage or GI stasis, which we'll get into in a minute. So definitely keep a brush on hand and be prepared to brush your bunny when they start to molt or shed. Same thing, molting and shedding. <laughs> now there aren't any vaccines in the US that you need to take your bunny to the vet to get. However, there are, sometimes you will need to take your bunny to the vet for illnesses. Now, probably the two most common would be poop related and GI stasis. And I've got this handy little infographic for you, courtesy of my bunnies. So you have their normal dry poop, little round balls, and it varies obviously based on the size of your bunny. You know, my larger five pound bunnies have much bigger poop than my three pound bunnies. And then the babies will poop little chocolate BBs. I don't think they taste like chocolate, but I haven't tried it. I don't recommend it either. But then they also have a wet type of poop called cecotropes or cecal pellets. And bunnies will eat those. I know that seems gross, but it's basically like probiotics for them. It helps to improve their digestion. So they will eat most of those. Now, babies are notorious for leaving them everywhere and smashing their cecotropes. And it just takes them a while to learn to eat them and to perfect that skill, if you will. So the cecotropes are wet and tiny and they're often clumped together like little grapes. So don't be alarmed, that is not diarrhea. Now, if you see your bunny having excessive cecotropes, then that could be an indication of a digestive imbalance that could be caused simply because they're babies and they have immature digestive systems. Or if you are feeding fruits and vegetables, that is often an indicator that you need to cut back on the amount or types of fruits and vegetables that you're feeding your bunny. If you see a runny, watery poop, that is diarrhea and you definitely would want to go to your vet as soon as possible because your bunny could be very sick and it would require swift medical attention. So that's why it's good to find a vet that you could take your bunny to and that would know how to care for your bunny at um, after hours. Because often when a bunny is sick, it's in the evening or on the weekends. It seems to be how that works, unfortunately. The other ailment that rabbits tend to get, and I would say probably is the most common cause of rabbit death, at least in my experience and what I've heard from other people, is GI stasis. So that is gastrointestinal stasis, meaning their intestines have either slowed down or stopped processing material through. And that is obviously really bad. 
Most importantly is to know your rabbit's typical behaviors. If your rabbit normally comes running up to you in the morning and they're happy to see you and they want their treats and they want exercise, and then one day you come and find them hunkered in a meatloaf position like this, but they won't get up, they don't wanna come and see you, they don't wanna move around, you will probably see little to no poop, or it might be really small poop um, that indicates dehydration and shutting down of their gastrointestinal system. They won't wanna drink, they won't wanna eat. They might even be grinding their teeth in pain and that's definitely a bad sign. So you would want to seek a veterinarian immediately as soon as you can. And assuming the veterinarian can help and they probably will give subcutaneous fluids, which is fluids uh, under the skin, and they might even give your bunny an X-ray to make sure that there's no blockage then you would want to come up with a plan with your veterinarian. What should you do if and when this happens again? And it might never happen again, or your rabbit just might be prone to issues like that. Sometimes it just happens that you have a rabbit with a really sensitive digestive system. What your vet might recommend, first and foremost, is to greatly reduce the amount of treats that you were giving your bunny, such as fruits and leafy greens. Some bunnies really just can't handle it. Your vet will probably also recommend a lot more hay and less pellets. Make sure it's a good quality pellet. You probably will just be feeding your rabbit hay for a while after they recover from GI stasis because that has a lot of fiber and that will help push things through the digestive system and help keep things moving. Lots of water. If your bunny is using a water bottle, sometimes switching to a water bowl will help them to stay hydrated. It really depends on the bunny. I have bunnies that love the water dish, and then I have a couple bunnies who, when given the choice, they choose the water bottle. So find what works best for your bunny. But I definitely don't recommend force feeding your bunny that you suspect might have GI stasis, because if they do have an actual blockage, you could kill them by force feeding them if there's nowhere for that to go. I do have a video about GI stasis and I share with you what I do with my bunnies when they exhibit signs of stasis. So that's something that you definitely might wanna check out and do a bit of research on before you get a rabbit. So you have a plan of action before it becomes an issue. I do give them belly massages with their rear end elevated to help alleviate any gas bubbles. I use some infant gas drops. I use Sherwood's SARX Rescue, I believe it is. It's the one that, it's a yellow powder and it makes kind of like a bunny Gatorade and it helps to increase their appetite and to get them hydrated. But I don't use any powdered foods mixed with water if I don't know that they don't have a blockage. So I just do the liquids and the stomach massages and I encourage exercise. That could be something you might want to try until you can get your bunny into a vet. Now again, GI stasis can be life-threatening for the bunny, so I highly recommend acting quickly, taking your bunny to your veterinarian and also having a plan in place with your veterinarian before it even happens. But definitely if it happens, try to figure out with your vet what you should do next time. My intent is not to scare you, I just want you to be prepared because so many people say, you know, I walked in, my rabbit was dead, or my rabbit stopped eating and then it died. It was probably GI stasis. Now sometimes there are absolutely no warning signs. Stasis could just happen out of the blue, you know, your bunny's eating fine the day before, and then suddenly it just happens the next day or later that day. But sometimes there are some signs and symptoms such as the poo balls getting smaller or they might not have finished their food that day yet they normally always do or they just might not be moving around as much so start to watch for those signs and symptoms so that you can maybe have some liquids that you give them to get them hydrated and get them moving and stomach massages you can have extra time to contact your veterinarian so knowing your bunny's typical behaviors is definitely imperative. If you have more than one bunny, it can be difficult to know the signs and symptoms, especially beforehand, because you see poop from two different bunnies and you have two bunnies sharing a food dish. So that's where it comes into play, knowing the behaviors that are typical of your bunny. Now, 
digestive tablets like this can be something you might want to think about getting for a bunny that tends to have digestive issues or if you're seeing excess fur in the poop. If you see these poop ornaments, I call them, and basically that's just poop strung together with fur that the bunny is ingesting, that often happens when a bunny is molting, so you just need to be more vigilant about brushing, but you also can use digestive tablets like this. I thought he was gonna jump off the table. He <laughs> just been keen. <laughs> um, this is a Sherwood brand digestive tablet, and it has pineapple and papaya in it, so they're very intrigued by the smell. And that can be something helpful to give to a bunny who is molting, or if you're seeing the poop ornaments, or if they might have some mushy poop, or in general, they just need some assistance with their digestion. And most bunnies take to these very easily. These guys have never had one, and this bunny is very interested in trying it, although it's quite difficult for them to eat because they just have little baby teeth. Some bunnies don't take to these digestive tablets right away and then others really like them. I'll bring mom up here, she loves them. So let's get Cora. I'm gonna give this to your mom. Hang on, let me put the mic back. So this is their mom, Cora. She just scarfed that down, she loves them. That's all I have. This video turned out way longer than I, whoa! I intended so I apologize but I also wanted to make sure I went into enough depth in each aspect so there you have it it's a little bit longer than I wanted it to be for those of you who are still watching thank you and please drop a comment below and let me know what breed of rabbit are you thinking about getting or do you already have and then everyone else who didn't stay until the end will wonder what you're talking about if you found this video helpful or enjoyable, please drop a like down below and consider subscribing to the channel. If you don't subscribe, you might miss my next fantastic video or my really one. Thanks for watching. Who's a pretty girl? You've got a little dingleberry. <laughs> Moose is over there trying to flip his box and he just flipped it. Moosey, I'm trying to make a video. They're eating my notes. Well, they're not really eating it. They're just checking out the paper here. This might be all I can video out here for today until these guys move. Oh my gosh. Like scratched under your chin, Cora? I sure hope they don't accidentally eat me and mistake me for a note. <laughs> that would be bad.